Today we're talking about five things that you need to take photos like this with your cell phone. Any cell phone, let's get into it. G'day guys, I'm Shane Mostyn. If you're new to the channel, I do a video each and every week all about small sensor photography, generally in low light with the phone that you have in your pocket. We're gonna teach you how to take photos just like this. So if you're into that sort of thing, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you don't miss anything I do each and every week. And if you have subscribed to this channel, you're a bloody legend. Number one is a tripod. I know it's obvious, but it's not necessarily what you think. You've got all these different options. The ones that I use is this one here. This is a Explorer Pro Photo tripod, and it is the duck's nuts. The second thing that you can look at is the ones with the bendy legs, the gorilla pods and things like that. The third one you can look at, and the one that I think you should absolutely avoid, are the little desktop tripods. These are good desktop tripods but they haven't got adjustability to go up and down, left or right, and move the legs up or down and out and in. So avoid them. Worst case scenario, when you're traveling a bit, use what I use when I was riding the motorbike a fair bit. You use this Ulanzi clamp and put a phone holder on top of it, and then you can set that clamp to sit onto poles, trees, all sorts of things, and a tripod is right there in your hand, and it's only this big. Number two is probably a little bit obvious as well, it's the phone holder. Most phone holders are going to do the job reasonably well. There are some things though that you really should avoid. I would avoid plastic. I would avoid the phone holders that you need to get a tripod base plate and screw onto the phone holder because it's just another bit of kit you've got to get. So there's plenty around now that have the Arca Swiss mount built into the, tri into the phone holder and that's the ones I would get. It just avoids carrying extra stuff. This one here, again, it's from Explorer. It's bloody good, really impressed with it. If you're a iPhone user and with a MagSafe phone, go and get yourself a MagSafe phone holder. They work really well. This one here again is from Photo Explorer and it's just, it's really bloody good. But just avoid the ones that haven't got the base plate that uh, you need to screw on. So it's all in one and avoid plastic. Another thing to keep in mind is the ones when they're clamping down, then they're usually metal, so make sure they've got some rubber protecting uh, to protect your phone, just to avoid any scratching and things like that. Number three is a remote shutter. Now with iPhones and Apple Watches, you can remotely fire the shutter on your iPhone camera from your watch. And I know other manufacturers can do that as well. With the Galaxy phones, if you've got an S Pen on there, they will remotely fire the shutter on the camera app so you don't need to touch the camera as well. There are other third-party Bluetooth devices that work as well. You don't actually have to use a remote shutter, it just helps. You can just set the timer for two or three seconds, three, 10, whatever seconds your phone has, and every camera on every phone has a countdown timer on it. The main thing you want to avoid, if you've got a tripod that the phone moves a little bit on, you don't want to be touching it. The bigger heavy duty tripods that are for DSLR, you can hit that shutter on the touch screen just fine. It'll work fine. I've never had a problem with that ever, despite what some of the comments in some of the videos say. But if you're remotely concerned about it, use the timer that's in the camera app on every single phone, ever existing, anywhere in the world. Prove me wrong, put it down the bottom if there's a phone that doesn't do that. Number four is all about planning for that photo. The best app, hands down, in my opinion, is Photo Pills. Photo Pills is available on Android and on iOS and it really is the duck's nuts when it comes to planning these sorts of photos. That galactic core, that orange gaseous cloud, that moves through the sky all through the season. It doesn't, it's not up there every night of the year. There is a season to it, whether you're in the Northern Hemisphere or Southern Hemisphere, it varies. But it also varies at the time of year as to where it starts in the night sky. In the beginning of the season, I'll see the tail of it out in the east and give it a few months into it, the whole thing will be in the sky in the east. Come about October, at the end of the season, it's in the west and it's horizontal. So an app like PhotoPills lets you use that app. It uses, it superimposes the image from the camera to the galactic core and lets you plan that shoot and lets you know what time of day you need to be there or time of night you need to be there and what day you need to be there to compose the photo that you've done in your planning. So number four is the planning app. Photo pills, I can't recommend it enough. I don't get paid or anything by it. I've used it for years and years and years, well before I started the channel. But if you know something better than photo pills, because it doesn't just do astrophotography, it does every sort of landscape photography you could want. But if you know something better, put a comment down the bottom. I'd like to look at it as well. Number five is an editing program to edit 
raw photos because every time that you take these sorts of photos if you've watched any of my tutorial videos before you know i'm going to shoot raw or shoot pro raw or shoot expert raw whatever it is it's going to be raw and you're going to need to edit that raw photo i use lightroom mobile some guys use snapseed some guys use darkroom any of those will do a job pretty well i'll link up the top here any video that's going to show you how to edit the photos that I take with my phone. They're the five things you need, guys. A tripod, a phone holder, a planning app, a remote shutter, and of course, your editing program. If I've missed something, or if you've got a better editing program, link it down the bottom or comment down the bottom. I'll go and check it out. May even do a video on it in the future. That's it for today, guys. Catch you later.